How's it going guys? My name is Leah and welcome to a brand new video. Today we are kicking off the second episode of our GFX series today uh, by doing a banner. So um, as I previously mentioned in my episode before with the thumbnail, I said I'd do a rendered banner but I decided I don't actually have enough time to record that um, over the duration of this week so I can't really do the daily upload thing. So I decided to just create a simple um, banner essentially as you can see I made like I whipped one up and it's on my channel and this is essentially what it will look like when you have it on your channel of course it will have your own name your own social media links and etc etc so um yeah so let's just drop by into Photoshop and I'll just show you what it looks like right here of course I have all my rules up but I'll show you how to do all that and everything uh, a bit later but these are all the layers here. It might look like a lot, but really it's really not. It's quite simple to do and if you follow the steps well enough, you'll probably have the same, basically the same outcome. So uh, yeah, so basically uh, what we're going to need for this video is you're going to need um, obviously Photoshop CS3 and above. Of course, as, as, as I mentioned before, I do prefer CS6 because I'm aware of all the hotkeys and then all the features that are with that version. So um, yeah, uh, you will need a channel art template which I do have here and I will always link down all the stuff in the description below so you guys have access to it because I'm not a mean person. So this is going to be your template we're going to be using, I'll show you how to put that into your files. Uh, next we have um, kind of just like a few CSGO things, as you can see I did make it CSGO themed, it's kind of the easiest game to do anyway. But if you guys um, are going to do your own thing when you're in, uh, throughout this tutorial, what I mean, um, you can search up your own images and make sure they're large enough. So make sure that maybe you want to search up the game or whatever you're doing in a wallpaper size so it's big enough to put into the file itself. Um, if you guys want to experiment uh, this technique with like CSGO, I'll just put this stuff down in the description below so it's just easy and you can just follow along really easily and once you're familiar with it you can basically use your own images and do it by yourself. Now basically um, you're also going to need uh, these two icons um, of course it depends if you actually use these social media things I just use Twitter and Facebook because they're kind of just like the big kind of social medias that are used within YouTube communities so that's it. So uh, without further ado, we're going to get started. So you basically what you're going to do first is you're going to open up the channel art template which will be down in the description below. You're going to right click it, copy the image. Now assuming you have face, uh, sorry, assuming you have Photoshop up, you want to just open it up, control N to create a new file and it should come up with the um, dimensions of the image that you copied um, and it should be 2560 by 1440 make sure the resolution is above maybe 150 and make sure the color mode is on RBG now that's really important because you guys are once if you re end up putting all your images in and it's still in grayscale you will actually have to flatten your image and you can't really work around that so it's just a bit annoying so just make sure it is on RGB color um, and on 8-bit basically so once you've done that just press ok and then you want to do Control v to paste in your template now it's very easy simple and basically what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be using the ruler tool to help us align our layers and make sure it's all centered and properly aligned so nothing looks too wonky now you should um, I quote should have these these rulers on the top and on the side of your canvas. If you guys don't, you do Control R to toggle these on and off, but obviously we're going to be using them on today. So yeah, so we're just going to zoom in a bit so we just have a nice, pre nice pre precise. So you want to do Control and your plus button uh, and your Control minus button or dash button to basically zoom back out. Very self-explanatory. So if you're going to use the rulers, these are really important. Um, especially when you do things that require quite a lot of positioning, especially with text, it's really, really effective to just use your rulers to keep everything aligned and neat, uh, which is always important when you're doing design. So without further ado, we're going to just, you want to hold click over the ruler and you should get something like this, which you can just drag down and you should get a white looking bar. Um, 
essentially coming down and you just want to put that just a bit over the top of this template. You want to do the same for the other side so you do this again and put it on the bottom. Simple and you're ready to go basically. Now we're just going to remove this whole section here so basically you're going to press M to open up your marquee tool. It should be on your rectangle marquee tool. If it's not you just want to right click that and select the rectangular marquee tool. Now with that you can just click on the side Hold click on the side of one of your rulers and just drag it out. That is a thunderstorm my friends, um, I'm going to keep recording though, you can't stop me. Uh, and you want to drag it out to the other side until you have this kind of dotted line section across this section of the template. Now once you've done that you want to press delete to delete that area and then control D to deselect it. Now once you've done that you want to hide your background so you press the eye icon next to your background layer and it should come up with a transparent area in the background. Simple and easy. Um, next part you should be doing is you should be uh, removing this area here just to make it kind of a solid colour. I just prefer to use a dark kind of almost dark grey which kind of borders between black and dark grey. Essentially it's just a nice clean colour to use and it just doesn't obstruct your view when you're trying to focus on your design. So once you've done that you can just use your marquee tool once more, you can just drag it out from the side and then do this and it should clip to your ruler anyway automatically and then once you've done that you've got to make sure that your actual template layer is selected and then you want to do alt backspace and that will fill in that area. Then you want to do it again for the bottom section and there you go. Now once you've done that you essentially have this whole area dedicated to your design. Uh, the reason why I don't use the above areas and below areas is because that's kind of for TVs and all that so I kind of really doubt that people really would like to watch your channel on a TV because um, it's just kind of like why would you do that you know what I'm saying so it's just kind of nice to keep it simple and clean and just keep it with fun the kind of computer or mobile phone type of formats so um yeah so what we're going to do next is we're going to be creating uh, the box which as you can see is like here it's kind of like a triangle basically well it's, well, it's a rhombus but what we're going to do is you're going to select the shape tool a uh, hotkey for this is U um, but it tends to change around for me so I just wanted to show you just in case if it's on something else you can just right click right click right click this box here or whatever it is down here it should be below your mouse pointer thing icon on the side and you can just select the rectangle tool of course you can press U and I'll take it to you automatically now you're going to make sure that your foreground color is on white <coughs> so as we said before you just want to click down here uh, change your color and then it should be all good to go now to create our shape we are going to just hold shift click and drag this out to create ourselves a nice perfect square like so now you're going to make sure that when you're working with this template you want to make sure that everything is all set under the template layer that makes everything really easy it doesn't clip over the top and it's just really easy to manage so once you've done that make sure it's on the on the layer below your template and it should be easy to go next thing we're going to do is we're going to be rotating our box so you're going to control T to bring up the transform tool and there should be a rotate section up here uh, you can set that to 45 or you can just rotate it yourself but obviously it's just a lot easier to get the exact number so we're gonna just set it to 45 like so now you should have a kind of section that looks like this um, what you're going to be doing next is you're going to do another ruler so you're going to drag a ruler up from the left hand side and put that in the center now it should automatically click to it uh, sorry snap to it and uh, once you've done that you just leave it there now next things um, we're going to kind of enlarge our rectangle just a bit so control T once more drag out the corner and hold shift and then we're going to push this up so our three middle points here are aligned with the top line um, and that should give you the basic kind of rhombus looking shape <laughs> basically. So once you've done that um, you can go drop down to your background, um, you can set it to 
visible so you press the eye eye icon once more and then what we're going to do is we're going to select eye to get our eyedropper tool click on the color the dark gray color or whatever you chose on the template and then we're just going to do alt backspace on the background so we just have a full complete space and we can just focus on the rectangle or the rhombus <laughs> essentially so once you've done that what we're going to be doing next is we're going to just grab our images of course you can choose more than two images or how many more images you want i just prefer to use two um it's just easier to do and it kind of makes the effect look nicer anyway so um yeah um, and also another tip is to kind of use colors that are kind of the same so see how these two are kind of following the blue kind of light bleach type of color uh, it just makes it blend in easier and it just looks a lot cleaner and nicer when you put it together but it shouldn't matter overly much so you can just use whatever you need to do so we're going to basically copy these images and paste them in like so like this and then we're just going to hide that first layer here. So we just work with the f very, the second layer, sorry. And then you should have this. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to drag this under. So it's over the top of our rhombus or rectangle. I'm just going to call it a rectangle for this. Um, and once you've done that, you want to do hold control, sorry, once, hold alt, click in between the two layers and you should have them clipped like so. Now, once it's like this, you can just resize it by using the transform tool, aka control T, and you can just kind of set it off like so. So we're just going to leave it like this. Alright, so once you've done that, you want to make your other layer visible, and you want to do the exact same thing, so you do control, sorry, you want to hold alt, click in between the layers, and it should clip this. Now you can just control, do control T, and you can transform it once more and just enlarge it and just size it how you wish. So I'm going to just make it so our terrorist person here is a bit more visible because he's kind of hiding down there. <laughs> so uh, once you've done that, um, I might actually make it so our this layer here, this one, is, um, <coughs> excuse me, is on top of our second layer so it clips over the top like this so once you when you do this effect you want to make sure that one image has a really kind of long area left so see how this area is kind of clipping over it we need that so when we do the effect that we're doing um we're able to do it effectively so we won't have any blank spots in between so once you've done that you want to do b now I am using a custom brush tool, I forgot to probably mention that when I was talking about what you need for this video, but I'll probably just edit that back in the back. But you will need a custom brush tool, I'm using Guild Wars 2 brush pack, which I will link down in the description below, as long as with the, all the other resources that you will need for this tutorial. So once you've done that, you should get a brush that's kind of like this. Um, it's like the fifth brush in, I'm pretty sure will be ordered the same once you've installed it yourself. And uh, once you've done that, uh, you want to make sure you're actually, sorry, you want to make sure you're on the eraser tool. Not the brush tool, you want to make sure you're on the eraser tool. And once you've done that, you want to select that same brush, leave it at its default size. And then whilst on that overclipping layer that we have, you want to just erase that so we have a nice blending grunge like effect just like this and it looks nice it's clean and it's a really nice easy way to blend in multiple image to get images together without ha having them kind of awkwardly clip over each other if you know what i'm saying so once you've done that that's our basic effect right there now next thing's next next what <laughs> okay our next step is that we're going to be doing text so this is the basic effect right here um what we'll be probably probably doing next is before we head on to text is you want to create a new layer so obviously it should be down here next to your bin icon on the bottom right hand side of photoshop and you want to clip that same layer as well so hold alt and click in between the layers make sure it is above your image layers now once you've done that you want to do you want to hold alt 
backspace. Make sure it is on a dark grey colour and uh, once you've done that you want to just set the opacity down to maybe 50% so our text will be a lot more visible and yeah. Of course in this case you can use any colour that you want. I think in the actual version that I made on my channel it's kind of like a dark blue as you can see and we're just going to set down the opacity just a bit. We might make it a bit darker as well like so and we'll bump that opacity up a bit of course it's up to your personal preferences but do make sure that you do do this because um if you don't do it you kind of have a really hard area where you can see the text and it's a bit of an annoying clash so um yeah so once you've done that that's the basic effect done uh you have your basic shape there you have your images the next and final part is basically putting the text into your banner so once you've done that you just want to press the t icon where you want to press T to bring up your text and then you just want to click in the middle of the canvas just like so. Now make sure the text is white, it's just a nice clean colour and uh, this font is called Nexa so if you guys want to google that I will have it down in the description below with everything else. Um, it's, a it's a really nice clean font, it comes in two variations with the bold and the kind of light font and it looks really professional and really clean so it's kind of a personal preference when I do banners like this. Excuse me. Alright. <clears throat> See, my voice gets really tied out when I'm doing this. So once you've done that, you want to just enter your name of the channel. And, uh, I guess it didn't work, so we're just going to recreate this. Like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set this to Nexa Bold. Now, uh, I think it's, an, it's a bit more effective and efficient if you use the same font that I'm using. But of course, you can use any different font that has a bold and light variation. Or you can just do whatever you need to do. It's all up to you. So once you've done that, you're going to just basically push it into the center like so. And we're going to add one more ruler which will be in the center of the actual kind of banner itself. Now it should be like this and then once you've done that you can just freely align the text to how it is and it should automatically snap to your rulers and should be perfectly aligned just like so. Alright, so once you've done that, you want to do Ctrl J on your text layer to duplicate it, and then we're just going to set this off to Nexa Light, and then we're just going to drag this up, like so. Now we're going to make this, so obviously I said in the official channel of, so we're going to do this. Now it's a bit of a, it looks a bit clunky when you put it together like this, so I prefer to just do spaces in between my letters, like so and then two spaces in between actual words and then you should get some nice looking text then you want to do Control t if it's too large just to shrink it down a bit by holding shift and dragging it down just like so and you want to just make sure it just kind of sits neatly on top of of your header, just like so. Now just make sure there's a nice kind of gap in between so it's kind of spaced out and nice and even. And then you want to duplicate that same text, drag it below, and then this will probably be your slogan or maybe just what your channel's about. So obviously I put CS Go and more, so I'm just gonna put CS Go, whoops, and whoops, more, just like this. I'll just put an explanation mark there. This is nice and wow, amazing. Just put a space in between that one. And there you have it. Okay. So next things next. So the next thing is we're going to be adding our social media links. This is of course it is optional. If you guys don't actually have the social media things, then I don't think this part's really necessary and you're basically done with the banner. And that's all you do. <clears throat> of course, I do go through some little extra little detail effects if you guys want to know how to do like these little bars here Just to make it look a lot nice cleaner and a bit more polished Of course, you can just end it here if you want and just stick with this design um, But you of course you can follow along with the tutorial if you just want to know how to do some other basic things if you want to add it into your own banner so um Basically, as I said, I we did need to use these icons. I will link them down in the description below for you to use. And yeah, so basically, what you're going to do, um, 
you can drag and drop it. Of course, I did mention earlier that I can't actually open some files and stuff like that, so I can't really drag and drop things in, so I have to do kind of select it and paste it into my actual document. So once you've done that, you want to put just put it there. I'll just grab the Twitter one and I'll put it in the file as well. And then that's basically it. <coughs> of course, we will resize them. Just um, we want to make sure they're white. So we're going to double click on the layer of the icon and we're going to choose color overlay and it should change it. And then you want to change that to white. And then you want, just like we did before, we are going to co copy the effects of this layer to the next one. So we're going to hold Alt, drag click the effects, and you should get the little effects icon, and drag it back onto the other layer. Now you should get two white icons, and it's, yeah, simple, easy, and done. Once you've done that, you want to, uh, preferably you would want to put another ruler down. So we're just going to make it so maybe another just a bit above and below just nice even spacing like that and then we're going to just resize by using ctrl t and shrinking this down and we're going to just make sure it's kind of set in between the lines of the document there you go uh, we'll probably set it up to the side here like this and then we'll do it to the same for the Facebook icon. Of course, this is always optional, and if you guys are actually are not interested in this, I'll just put a little annotation link so you can fast forward to the other effects that I will be doing for this. But if you guys want to know how to put some social media links and um, stuff, then just keep following along. So we're just going to resize this down so it fits in between the rulers that we have. I'm going to bring it back out to make it a bit more even with weather distances with our other icon. Now once you've done that, that should be good. Okay. Now you want to basically just control J again on one of your lighter text layers and then you just want to drag it over to the side and then you want to enter your social media account. So I don't know, just enter here. Whoops. Make sure the spaces are between just to make it look nicer. And yeah, of course, if you don't actually have enough space to put your username in for these links, then you might just want to drag uh, these two layers out like so. So you can basically choose these layers by holding control and clicking on that layer. Then you can just do shift and drag it along the side, just like so. Easy peasy. Now we're going to do the same. So we're going to just control J on our other layer and sh shift drag it to the other side. And then we're going to do control again, and we're just going to make sure that it's just on the side so it doesn't clutter up the central space, just like so. And that's basically our basic banner there. Um, we're going to just complete this by doing these little overlaid uh, bars, and we're just going to do to do this. We're going to do our rectangle tool once more, and you're going to just drag it, click and drag it. Uh, just like so. Uh, of course this is all up to you, you can choose what size and how thick you want the bars to be, but I just prefer them to be nice, kind of thin. So once you've done that, you want to do Control T on the rectangle and you want to set the angle or rotation back to 45. Or negative 45. Yeah, there we go. Negative 45 for this side. And then we're going to just clip it over that layer. And once you've done that, you want to set the blend mode to overlay. You should get a nice burn effect. Now, you might set this to a lighter color. It's up to you. You might set it to a kind of dark gray blue to fit in with the theme. And then you want to do Control J. Whoops. And you want to just extend this out, but put the blend mode back to normal so you have bars up like this. And then you want to do it once more. And then Control T to shrink it down. Now once you've done that, you want to select these three layers or how many bars you made. You want to select them, Control J, Shift, click and drag to drag it across the horizontal plane, and then transform it and flip it horizontally. 
now it should give you basically a mirrored image and you can just drag that back on to the same position as we did on the other side and there you have it um, of course I didn't really actually layer all my things but um that's about it so once you've done that that's basically the basic banner completed and done so I hope you guys are going to be using this if you did actually use it comment your channel give it to me I'll look at it I'm gonna like praise you for it because these tutorials take a really long time to make and um, it's kind of annoying trying to think of something unique to try and base the tutorial on so um yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial though it was quite a fun thing to make um, I mean personally I think it looks really nice when you put it on your channels it's really professional clean and you can use it for a very various amounts of channels so you guys can do like vlogging channels or sport channels god knows what you're going to do for your channel but this battle will fit in perfectly so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and um, yeah as I mentioned before all the resources that were used in this video will be down in the description below and um, yeah so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial we might be uh, looking through some logos or something I don't know just comment down in the description comment down below if you guys want actually something specific for me to do or help you out with and I'll probably reply back or make a video of it so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I'll see you guys next time in the next video what is my English I'll see you guys next time bye